and say hi. Hey everybody. Please tell us about yourself. Uh, date of birth, yeah. education, background. Okay. Uh, I'm 28, turning 29 in September. Um, I'm I was born in Fairhope, Alabama, which is close to Mobile. I've lived in Alabama my entire life. I went to the University of Alabama for uh, college and I got my degree in accounting. I worked as an accountant for about four years and then decided that that was not what I wanted to do long term. Um, it was too much time behind the computer, not talking to anybody. I just wasn't really getting that personal interaction that I wanted in my job. Um, my uncle owns Bay Mortgage and so right after COVID, he called me and said, hey, why don't you come work for me? Um, you can get into the mortgage industry. It's kind of numbers based. There's numbers involved, but you get to talk to people and you get to meet people as well and help people buy, buy houses. So that's why, that's why I'm doing it now. Okay, but why did they name you Hill? <laughs> it's a family name. Uh, it's my dad's name, so I'm Hill Jr. Um, mm. Yeah, right. And he got his name from his grandmother's maiden name. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a family name. Okay. Yeah, and I'm tall. I'm six, I'm six foot seven inches. So yeah, okay. We, we're going to show you in a second. Yeah. Okay. Okay, right now we're looking at your website, and uh, I see you have an uh, area where people can click and check rates. Correct. Tell us about it. So the rates change daily. Um, they used to not change as much, but given the current economic environment of banks collapsing, um, inflation, certain economic factors nationally, the rates are changing more daily. So on our website, we have the rates, um, and those rates are just kind of what we publish every day. It's not necessarily the rate that you will have. You know, your rate can be determined by credit score, um, how much debt you have, how much you're putting down as a down payment. All certain kind of factors can go into rates. But we just kind of give that on our website just to kind of educate buyers as to what the rates are looking around. Um, today we're, you know, around 6%, 6 percent, six and a quarter percent, somewhere in there. Um, but again, that well, can all change depending on your Please factors. tell us about uh, any special rates about of people of certain profession. Right, so a thing that we, I've been doing a lot lately with a lot of um, doctors and nurses and dentists that are coming out of their residency, they need a house while they're in their residency, and they may have gone to medical school, let's say, in Birmingham, Alabama. Well, mm -hmm. they're getting placed in their residency in Mobile. They need a house for the four or five years that they're here. We have a loan program um, that they can qualify for if they have a certain income in their residency, where they can have a very low down payment, 3%, mm -hmm. um, but we, as Bay Mortgage, have very low closing costs. So we have lower rates because it's a special program um, and low down payment and low closing costs. It's a great program for any kind of nurses, doctors, dentists coming out of medical school or nursing school that need a house to live in. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's, that's interesting. And like what uh, kind of paperwork they have to submit to qualify? So typically we get everything that we need from a normal buyer. We're gonna get things like bank statements to prove that they have uh, money for a down payment. We'll have to get an application. We'll have to run their credit to make sure they have a credit score and that they have um, satisfactory credit for a loan. And really the only thing that is different about this loan that we will need is a letter from the employer, typically a hospital or the practice they're going to be working in. It's basically just an employment letter. So it'll state how much they're going to make, um, the terms of their employment, and what we can expect to see income wise over the next two or three years. Because typically in residency, the income will increase um, throughout the years. So we just have to have that document to verify that all that will happen. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, does it mean they can uh, buy house anywhere in Mobile and Baldwin County? Correct. Yeah, we can do all of Alabama, Sweet Home, Alabama. Mm -hmm. Interesting. What's the lowest credit score your bank is willing to work with? So in that program, the lowest is going to be 620. Mm -hmm. um, we do have another loan program where we can go 600, but it's not going to have the same perks as that other program, the down payment will be three and a half percent versus three percent, so a tad more on the down payment, um, mm -hmm. and it'll be an FHA loan. But when a doctor gets that loan with three percent, is it a conventional? It is conventional. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, how long does it take you to process a loan? So from start to finish, if you call me today, today is uh, Tuesday, if you call me today and say I want to get pre-approved for a loan, and you send me everything that I need from you today, I can have you pre-approved by tomorrow. And that pre-approval is a full, basically a fully underwritten loan. We've gone through assets, income, credit, everything we've done all on the front end to make sure that if I give you a pre-approval letter, that loan will close. We have underwriters in our office in Fairhope, which is pretty unique. We have um, in-house underwriting, in-house processing. 
which helps us make the process very quick, very smooth, and very efficient. We can get closed in two weeks, no problem. Really? Mm -hmm. Well, that's amazing. That's amazing. Uh, well, now I want to talk about you as a person. Like, right. tell me about when you were growing up. What did your family do? Right. So I'm the oldest of three kids. Um, so growing up, I always had a younger brother to pick on and a younger sister who was just fun to play with. Um, we always were outside. We had a creek in our neighborhood, so we were always playing in the creek. Um, I played sports growing up. I played football and soccer. I'm pretty big, so I was naturally brought into sports from all the coaches they wanted me to play. I wasn't very good at the sports, though, so by about high school, I kind of quit sports and just focused on working. Um, I still play golf, though. In my free time now, I love to hunt and fish. I'm a big hunter. So um, a little bit north of Mobile, about two hours north, my family has a hunting camp. And we go up there and we hunt deer, turkey, duck, all that kind of stuff. So that's a lot of fun. I like doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, well, let's, let me ask you more about hunting then. Uh, when, you, so, when you talk about hunting camp, what exactly do you mean? So at the hunting camp, there is a house that we all stay in. Um, it's got bunk beds in the house, so we can sleep, you know, 12, 15 people there. Um, there's a kitchen. There's a lake behind the house so we can fish. Um, we got a couple boats to fish in the lake with. Um, and then down where we hunt, it's actually on a river, so it's kind of a swamp area. Um, but that's really good for game. There's deer everywhere. Um, plenty of deer. We see a ton of deer each year. There's a lot of turkeys, and I don't know if any of you know about turkey hunting, but it is one of the most fun things in the world to do. It's kind of like a game of chess, but in real life, you're actually playing against that turkey that you're trying to hunt. Tell us, tell us. So the way the turkeys are, it's their mating season when you're hunting. So you try to imitate the female turkey, the hen, and you're chasing after a male turkey, the gobbler. And with deer hunting, you know, you really just sit in the stand and you kind of wait for the deer to walk by or they're going to get food or something. You wait for them. Well, turkey hunting, the turkeys are on the ground and they're always moving. They're, they're, they have a lot of predators, so they're always on the move. They can't really stay still very long. And as the female hen that you're trying to imitate, you have to call to them, so we have, I have a bunch of different calls that I used to call to them. Um, and when they gobble at you, that tells you that they hear you. Well, sometimes they hear you, but they don't want to come to you. So you have to start sounding really good on your calls, or you have to move around and try to, you know, if you think they're going to go left, you have to kind of cut around them and make sure they don't see you and try to cut them off. Hold on, but when you said, so you have to produce the noises we, right. we are familiar with. Doesn't mean you have to do it with your mouth. Or you have to, you have some kind of tool. Right. So we have tools, I guess is what you want to say, but there's several different kinds. There's a box call, which is made out of wood. There's a slate call, which is actually slate, like a stone that you scrape with wood and it makes a very high pitched um, yelp that a turkey makes. And then there's also a mouth call that I don't have right now, but you can put it in your mouth and you blow air through it and it sounds like a turkey. And really, can you make any noise without any tools for us? I could try to. It's not going to sound. It's probably going to sound like a dead dog, but I could try to. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So it probably sound like a dead dog. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, that's what a turkey does. And the turkey will gobble to you. <laughs> <laughs>